When it's time to go, as a self-defender, you go with everything you got. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Brazil. Here we're going to see a store clerk who's going to get a great counter ambush against two armed robbers. It's going to teach you some important lessons about awareness even when other tasks are standing in your way, as well as facing multiple attackers and staying in the fight even if you're injured. The guy behind the counter is obviously the clerk. The two guys in the store are going to end up being our armed robbers. They have the long sleeves, the guy in the short sleeves here is just a customer who's gonna end up being in the crossfire. So what we see here is these guys are just acting cool. I mean, the guy with the helmet on is a little bit sketch. And you can see the guy in the green shirts looking around. He's giving those pre-attack indicators. And when he feels safe, he draws a gun, pulls it out there, and starts to threaten this customer. But the owner has a gun too, and he starts putting shots on bad guys and absolutely wrecks their day. As we go to the other uh, angle of it here, you see him pulls out, gets the first one, gets shots back on the second guy, back to the first. They start running off, and now our owner here is going to come back out, figure out what is going on with these guys, and now we're going to go back to the first angle again, and you're going to see the customer come out because he has been shot in the arm. Thankfully, he's all right, but you can see he is bleeding badly. That is an arterial blood flow right there. He is in a bad way. Now we go back to uh, the outside angle and you see these bad guys here are starting. I think that bad guy number one with the gun emptied all the beans in the wheel and then he runs off. The other guy's not quite so lucky. He's not working quite well. I don't think his legs are working as well as he wants, but he's going to fall down right there and I think take the room temperature challenge. And so our owner is going to kind of try to get a feel for what's going on, peek around that corner, not see anything else. And this one is over the good guy wins. Now let's go back and learn some lessons. There's always eight lessons on our website. The owner here has gotten a gun. It's not legal for him to have that gun. He's not a, a police officer, but he'd been robbed so many times. He said, look, man, I'm just not going to put up with this anymore. We can sympathize with that. And even the chief of police in his town said he should be able to defend himself. I want to think about pre-attack cues here. First of all, look at the guy in the green shirts, looking around, you see him looking for, you know, potential witnesses and whatever. And those pre-attack cues are very important. You got to pay attention to them. Now, once he pulls the gun out, you see right here that our clerk is ready for him. He is paying attention, not just to the task at hand of ringing up stuff at the register, but he has been paying attention to those pre-attack cues and he knows what's coming. Now let's watch what goes down. As he pulls the gun out and puts it over the shoulder of the first guy to get to the second guy and puts it in danger. You know, you gotta look at the range of your force multipliers. Might have needed to move sideways instead of in because that guy could have fouled his shot. Now, first shot goes into that guy, second shot goes into the guy in blue, third shot into the guy in green again. And I wanna talk for a second here about the boarding house rules. When we talk about the boarding house rules at ASP, everyone gets first before anyone gets seconds. That only applies to equal threats. And the guy with the gun was a much bigger threat than the guy without. I would've put a couple in him first because the other guy did not have a gun out. I'm not giving him a hard time here, but just would've been the better solution. Next, I think the clerk did a fantastic job here. You notice his hands are full and he's paying attention to what's going on in his world and he's gonna drop what's in his hands to get two hands on the gun. And that's an incredibly important skill for all of us to do. Drops those right there. Now the gun comes out and he puts shots where they belong. And I want you to pay attention here that the clerk has two hands on the gun. That was really good. It's an advantage of appendix carry. Real easy to get the gun out and two hands on it. But you notice that the bad guy, number one here, the guy with gun in hand, we stopped it where we did because he has got a shot back towards our clerk. So it's a two-way ranger on here. That's why if they're not equal threats, you got to start putting as many on that guy as you can. You see the shots coming back his way. Thankfully, didn't hit him, but they did hit the bystander. Now, I don't think that that's anything that the clerk could have done about that, but he did get out of the danger zone the bystander did. Next, I want to say as a clerk here, don't chase fleeing felons. You know, you know that store better than they do. Retreat back into a safe place and set a counter ambush if they come back and try to hurt you again. Don't chase them because it could have been trouble. We've seen people die chasing fleeing felons. Worked out for them okay here. Next, of course, we want to talk about first aid skills because this guy here is bleeding badly. He needs a tourniquet on that arm right now. He is, is going to bleed out pretty fast if you don't do something. An Israeli bandage on there is try to get some pressure on it. A tourniquet if that doesn't work. But having that equipment on you and the skills to use it, an incredibly important thing to have on you at all times. That's why I carry a tourniquet. That's why I carry an Israeli bandage. That's why I carry some hemostatic on me at all times. Now, as these guys are running off, we let them run off. Our goal is to stop the threat. When the first goblin who had the gun ran off, the second goblin is not have a gun in hand. So I like that the clerk comes out here, sees what's going on, keeps the gun up, but I don't think he takes any more shots at this guy because the guy isn't a deadly threat. Instead, 
he stops shooting when the threat stops. Excellent job there. Overall, I think this clerk did a fantastic job. He was aware. He got shots on target first, put them where they belonged, and covered his ASP.